He's moving from perch to perch. Calling, so we gotta find a good window to get. Oh man, he's like right here. Hey guys, I'm Ian Rock. I'm a wildlife filmmaker based in Costa Rica. And this story begins like many of my other stories about an animal, a bird to be specific. This one, the three wattled bellbird. The three wattled bellbird is super famous for its song. It's one of the loudest bird songs in the world. And it's also really unusual sounding. I've been wanting to hear it in person for a really long time. Actually, last year went with a friend and very talented field guide to go find them in the south of Costa Rica in the highlands, and they were nowhere to be found. We couldn't find any. So it's a long time coming to search for this bird. Here's a map of Costa Rica. I live in Capos, and I've been told that there's a lot of bellbirds here. It's about a four hour drive away. So I packed the gear and we hopped into the car to drive up along the coast. Then we turned off on a gravel road that went up to the mountains. For this trip, I was joined by my girlfriend, Den, who's actually a wildlife vet here in Costa Rica. She has extremely good eyes and is very good at finding animals. Along the way, we spotted a bunch of motmots that I was able to take some photos of. I'll try to make a little video about that side quest for my Instagram. We kept driving, getting higher and higher in elevation. Okay, so we just pulled off on this dirt road that winds up into Monte Verde, up into the cloud forest of Costa Rica. And that means that we might be getting into bellbird territory. So now we are starting to listen for the birds because you definitely hear them before you see them. With the mot mot delays, by the time we got into town, it was basically nighttime. So we called off the bird search for the day and went to find a place to stay for the night. That's our hotel. It's about a bad place to stay for this trip. Okay, we're in Monte Verde. You can see we're pretty high. We're at around 1300 meters in elevation, but man, it's beautiful up here. We went to have a quick breakfast, and it felt like the pressure of finding a bellbird was looming over us everywhere we went. To be honest, I was pretty nervous about our odds finding these birds because we were told that they are actually drastically down in numbers this year, that they had moved to a different region of Costa Rica. Um, so I'm right outside our hotel. That's our hotel. That's the Corolla. That's our car. Um, but in this valley behind me, I'm hearing bellbirds. They're out there, I think. Far away, but they're out there. And so the search began. We had no idea where to start and decided just to try to follow the sounds of the birds and start asking questions. Okay, we're at another dead end in the road, but we're listening and seeing if we can hear any right now. There is one. We're trying to follow the sound and seeing if we can get close to them, at least. Um, right now they sound really far away, but oops, we're headed on a the Corolla. It's an amazing car, but it's not really <laughs> meant, it's not really meant for off-roading like this. <laughs> we started going to different reserves and Den was able to ask guides questions. We found out the best place to see three wattle bellbirds was Bajo del Tigre. Is this a mot mot? There's a mot mot, I can't turn this camera around. Okay, obviously I get distracted easily, but this is the place that we were told that there were recent bellbird sightings. Yeah, yeah, I know, there's a big bellbird on the front, but a lot of places had that and they didn't have any bellbirds. And the beauty of filming wildlife that I always try to remember is that there are no guarantees. Just getting the camera ready and putting the microphone on so maybe we can actually get some call sounds. Okay, we're headed in. Let's see what we can find. Let's see if they know where a place we can go.
Bajo del Tigre is part of the Children's Eternal Rainforest Reserve, which is the largest private reserve in Costa Rica, actually. And um, apparently there's a really good perch. Oh my God, it's close. Just we're like two minutes into walking and we can already hear the, hear the bellbirds a lot closer here. We're getting so close to this bird. Right there, do you hear that? Wow. Then spotted one, but right as I saw it too, it flew away. We would soon realize that this would be a theme of today. We decided to keep moving to a spot that we were told was even better. We're gonna look and see if we can see a clear point of view. It's so close though, that's its whistle. Okay, we're super close. We need to find a window so that we can see his perch. And he's moving from perch to perch. Calling, so we gotta find a good window to do. Oh man, he's like right here. So close. It's right there. It's a little tricky because the birds keep flying away. It's really difficult to find. As soon as you find them, they fly away. And you constantly have to keep moving around. Walking back now because as soon as I put my camera down, I moved. Yeah. Get my workout for the day, get my steps. The birds are really hard to see because they are perched so high in the tree canopy. You have to look for a window. Every time we found one, he would move at the last second. As soon as I put my camera down, it would fly away. I thought maybe we wouldn't get a chance, but then finally we found this one. This is a male three waddle bellbird. And you can see how it got its name. It's got the three waddles hanging from its mouth. Males of this species have three waddles of skin hanging from their face. And no one really knows what those waddles are for actually, but um, maybe it's for mating or something like that, but no one's really certain. These waddles come when they're around two years old and they'll grow for their whole life. Three waddle bellbirds are found from Honduras to Panama. The purple is their range year round, and the orange is when they are breeding, which is from March to September. You can see that the females look completely different from the males, and this is what we call sexual dimorphism. Three waddle bellbird uh, eats seeds whole, and they're really important for the forest. They help disperse seeds. And I was lucky enough to capture how they do that. Watch. The bellbird regurgitates whole seeds it couldn't digest, dropping them onto the forest floor. And this behavior nearly doubles seed survival rate. But what I think makes the bellbird the most special is this incredible call. This audio is not delayed or edited in any way. Listen to this. Isn't that crazy? The neotropical bellbird family are some of the loudest birds in the world. The loudest bird in the world is the white bellbird, and it's a similar call. But actually, the three-waddle bellbird has more variation in its call. I want to play it again, and I've had to dial down the sound so I don't break your speakers, but hearing it in person was unreal. Crazy, these birds call all day, really loud calls all day. It must be exhausting. Instead of vocal cords, birds make songs with an organ called a syrinx. Through air, flexing of muscles, and the vibrations of the syrinx walls, birds can create sound. And you can really see the muscles of the bellbird flexing as it's producing its call. In fact, the anatomy of its cousin, the white bellbird, showed that this bird was way more muscular than a normal bird its size. Now these birds have a really interesting and kind of funny mating ritual. The male will sneak up on the female and get really close behind her and then he'll open his mouth up like you saw, the big 180 degree open mouth and bonk, that bonking call right behind her and startle her off the branch. And basically, for some reason determined by evolution, female bellbirds just love getting screamed at in the face. But to their credit, I think these calls are so beautiful and impressive and unworldly. A 
I've been wanting to film one of these birds for so long. So I'm super happy. Really beautiful. Okay, well, I think we got some good shots. You can hear the thunder coming in now, so it's probably a good time to, to leave the forest. But man, what an incredible bird. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you learned something new about an animal today. And we'll see you for the next one. There seems to be a group of squirrel monkeys around my interview area. <laughs>